<laughs> Good morning. Um, there's more poster sessions here at ISTE, so I'm about to go over. They start officially at 1030, which is in like two minutes, but people have been visiting already. And as somebody who's done a poster session before, it's a little annoying to have people show up before they get started. So I don't want to want to start too early, though. There it looks like there's a lot of students presenting this time, so it should be really good. Um, another advantage or thing that's going on today is I have very bright yellow shoes on, so that's fun. <laughs> You're welcome, Get Teaching. Oh, <laughs> my yellow shoes got some hearts. Awesome. <laughs> What's neat about the poster sessions is if you go to the ISTE Connects website and um, search the program for posters that are happening right now, you can view their descriptions, and they've usually supplied a link uh, with handouts and things too. So um, a lot of the posters here have had QR codes so that you can uh, scan if you're in person, but they tend to put the, the sessions online too. This one's called Problem Solving with Scalable Game Design. Russian Hurley over here, but he's he's still getting ready, so I don't want to bother him yet. Try to come back to him. <laughs> oh, this one, <laughs> caution tape all over, and it's called the death of traditional learning. <laughs> Hello to Canada. All right, well, <laughs> this one looks even more interesting over here. There are a lot of poster sessions from Mexico. I think that might be where they're from, too. <laughs> is, this your, is this your session here? Yeah. Do you mind being recorded? No. All right, you want to take the microphone and tell us what it's about? Uh, well, this is a project that we made. It's about using Syria Construct. We want to... Well, the American people sa see how Mexicans, well, share the traditions. This is a game we made, so people won't forget the traditions of Mexico. As you can see, uh, that is Arnoldo, that is the main character. Uh, that in this, well, this part um, is mal uh, it's called uh, Magnate Malvado, that wants to, well, close all the historical places in Mexico. Well, and Arnoldo gets uh, like an special uh, well, huh? uh, to get everything done to fight against uh, the Magnate Malvado. So uh, he's fighting against the Magnate Malvado to, sh uh, to protect the traditions of Mexico. As you can see, Arnoldo is the Calavera and the others are the ones that are protecting, uh, well, the Magnate Malvado. So I saw the video was made with Go Animate. What did you use to make the game? Uh, the game was made in Sura Construct 2. It's more, well, it has m more than two, 500 programming lines and it was pretty difficult to do it, but it took like around six or seven months to do it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So other than how long it took, what was the most surprising thing about making a game? Well, the making the characters because, you know, it's difficult for us to create a character that everyone li wants to like, so... We wanted uh, the characters to be, well, for you and for us, so you can like it, too. And then how are you getting the game out to people so they can play? Uh, well, it, it's already available on Play Store, as you can see. Yeah, it's already available. If you, yeah, so uh, if you want to play it, you can play it, as you can see right here. It's already played. Look. Are you any good at it? What? Are you any good at the game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's the one who programmed too. So, uh, hey, he's pretty good at the game, actually. Well the game. I know very well how he's made it, the levels, the cheats, everything. Uh, <laughs> you know it inside and out. Yeah. <laughs> we so. have this to 
We also have this so, so the player could know could uh, place the uh, everything like like this. Uh, we have the we have everything so the the player could know how the, the the game is made and how the traditions are, you know. Yeah, because uh, well, in this in this play, uh, well, in this part, the prize or the final prize of the of the game is an altar, the muertos. The altar de muertos, uh, well, is the final prize. So at each level, you get one part of the altar, and after you finish the game, you can build your own altar, so you can fight against the magnate malvado and you can win. So, so what's the people are asking about uh, downloading it? What's the name of the game again? How will they find it in the Play Store? Uh, the game is called. Get fun with death, and it's available on Play Store. Get get fun with death. Yeah, get fun with death. You guys have a have a great uh, booth here. This is wonderful. Well, one more question then. So after going through this experience, what's next? Well, I don't know what is next. We think to upgrade uh, this thing because last year we made a stop motion videos on Atlanta, Georgia. We want to get something better the next year. At uh, and another thing is we are in another. Uh, we will present this game in another. Uh, exposition called Solacid will be in Mexico in Guadalajara an international exposition after we made a, a, we, we gained the second place in Aguascalientes where we are from and the next uh, step is Guadalajara so we go in uh, Guadalajara we think that we can present at London or different places and we want people to see how Mexico shares its traditions and the next, the next upgrade will have things like more history more levels previously were there were like five levels but we we made only three because of space the game was the graphics are so so big that the game was like more than 61 megas megabytes and, the, and what was we have some problems to put in in the play store so we only put three levels but next then we will put more levels we already have have it made have made it we have it in the computer and then, when we solve that problem, the le the game will have all the levels that already that the history is uh, uh, that in the history are supposed to be. That that is awesome. This is on something called Periscope, and uh, people are giving you hearts right now because they love what you've shared. I think I love this because you've learned a great skill, but you're making a difference in the world. You're teaching people about your culture. And it's a game, and it's fun. This is awesome. So you deserve all those hearts. Thank People you. are saying great job there. Thank you. Thank you. And great makeup, too. Same. Yeah, same. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> wow, that, that was amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have it on uh, my website. So um, uh, it's learninginhand.com. And you'll see there's a button that says live broadcasts. Uh, let me, um, let me that, okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because this is a very interesting the concept and everything. And it, it was, yeah. Uh, we, had, we had 62 people watching 62 people watching your now. students. Yeah, that they, they were really impressed with what they saw here. So I think there's they're going to the Play Store right now to, to download it. Okay. <laughs> so I need to download an app? No, no. My, just go to a website. Um, and my website is learninginhand.com. So the way Periscope works are these recordings just last for 24 hours, but but it saves my camera roll, so I'll upload it to YouTube, and then on this page I'll show you is where okay, it'll be forever. Hand. Yeah. Com. Yep, that's that's my site, and then it's the internet is slow. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm on my my 4G connection because the ISTE Wi-Fi is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It keeps uh, cutting off and on. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I see. That's good. Yeah. Perfect. And then... Um, this it's, is you. That's <laughs> me. And then this, this post right here. So that's what you'd want to bookmark. And I'll add it to a YouTube video at the bottom okay. in a couple days. But right now, that link... Let's see. It's on Twitter. Right there is live. If you click that, you'll see yourself. <laughs> let's do that. All right. Let's try to do that. <laughs> I know uh, that's a little bit slow. But oh. Yeah, and you, it, maybe it'll ask you to download the Periscope app, which might take a while. I like your microphone. <laughs> Thanks. I need to 
it's it's essential because it's so loud in here, but people listening so they can't really hear the noise. So, so while while I have you, so the, the students you brought here, um, what what's something that we should know about them? I mean, we, we saw the game, we saw how 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 they work together. They seem really excited about their project. But but what else about this this whole cultural thing that they've done? They have a lot of th things to to be covering there. The first one that I think uh, of is mm, they need to to think how to to work in team. It's one of uh, the essential needs, and to get uh, the collaboration that is the the need thing in here. I believe uh, that they share. First of all, they need to think about what they need to. What is the best thing that they can do? What the, what is the best thing that they can talk about? And I believe that the tradition that they have been living on for a couple of uh, time and a lot of years in there. So I believe that that is one of the the most important part. And after that, we 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 have been uh, working like for four months in a row to create all of this, to create the game, to create all the souvenirs and all the things that are around. We have a lot of things. You you should take a, one, a, a lot of it with yourself. I, I will give it to you in a moment. But I think that uh, also another important thing is in some way they are losing by the pass of technology and everything and, and the growing of a lot of new cultures. And I think that this is the essential basic for us. And this is the very basis of our of our tradition, of our culture. So we need to share this with the world so they can know that all the things that we have to offer over there. I, th I think the very best projects are ones that make a difference in the world. And your kids are making a big difference. And like I told them, learning a lot along the way. Uh, they're going to do great things in the future, and they're already doing wonderful things. Okay, thank you. I appreciate everything. And, uh, well, you know, it's just uh, the work of themselves, you know. We only put some of the, of the tools over there so they can work with it. And they do everything. And they are tend to, to, to ask them, to be asked them uh, in, some, uh, in some ways that we haven't think about it, you know. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you too. <laughs> uh, that was great. This is agriculture is sprouting into technology. They have a burlap background. I, I'm really into bulletin board design, so I love when they use different materials for that. Hey, John Samuelson. How are you doing? He's not here uh, at the poster sessions. I saw he wrote something on Twitter. So. <laughs> All right. You're welcome. They, I'm more than happy to, <laughs> to showcase their work. It's awesome. Looks like more um, app coding here. Hey, Mr. Reamer. And hi, Ryan. Excuse me. <laughs> hey, do you mind being recorded? Yeah, it's great. It's great? Okay, so it's live on the internet now. There are like 74 people watching who couldn't be here. Um, can you tell us uh, about your uh, poster session here? Uh, do, do you mind holding the microphone? Nice and close. So, we can hear. Yeah. so this is a biology project um, about biology. Uh, we tried to explain the six kingdoms, making a funner way to students or teachers to uh, show us the different kingdoms, to making a funnier way because you know if you talk and just say it's like boring right for us so that's why we make this uh, so students could be interested on the on the idea on the biology and we made a video game a game about the this theme you just click the you can try it if you want okay uh, let's do Monera I lost yeah <laughs> no, I just saw you. Um, okay. Yeah. Then the yeah. second one, it's. Yeah, this is to show you about the, a little bit of what we do. These are some programs that we use to create this page. We create a page about it. 
Yeah, um, we have the Android because we made two um, phone application. That it's over here. You can watch it here. Uh, watch it here. Yeah, you can uh, choose the one you want. Yeah, the, we try to make it on the phone because we know that all of us has a always without the phone, we could always have the information. So that's basically what we made. We try to say about the the project. I don't know if you have some questions. So, um, so if if anybody watching has questions, I'd be happy to ask. But um, my question is then: you've obviously learned about the kingdoms. What else did you learn by creating the app and, and games? Well, um, we also create uh, about the uh, biology. We also learn how to create some programs. That is basically what we want to do. Uh, that it's uh, the programs that we made to learn. Uh, we too learn the about the biology, right? Well, so we we achieved our our thing that we wanted, right? I don't know. The uh, app is free. It's download free. You can search for it and you just download it on Android. And uh, where are you from? Uh, we're from Mexico, Culiacán, Sinaloa. Okay. Yeah. And how did you get chosen to come to Houston? Well, uh, the first of the year, we um, just like, they talked to us about the Easter. And they told us that it was to be really big. So we like, uh, were interested. And we tried to look for it. We tried to look about information about it. And um, then we send our idea because we tried to make some uh, things that students like. And then they send us, they told us that we were accepted, and we start working uh, working hard in the project, making some modifications, etc. So if people want to get the, the Android app, what's the name? Is it in the Play Store? Oh, the name it's uh, App Store. Uh, yeah, Play Store. Sorry, it's about so Bio Tree. Bio Tree. Yeah, that's me. You can download it, free download. Oh, thank you. Double tapping the screen and giving you lots of. Oh, they are choose because uh, we send the idea of the project that we want to work on it, and they tell you if you were accepted or not. It's a message, right? Awesome. All those hearts. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So so impressive. Um, those, those apps are great. I do, I do, there's one thing I do wonder about. You know, there's, there's so many kids doing app development. I know they they learn lots um, from a from a practical standpoint. I wonder if a mobile website would be better for sometimes for some of this content because then th you wouldn't have to go to the Play Store. You could just go to a web address and it would work on any platform. Um, but learning to, to to program something on Android is great, and that's a great starting point. Um, I do have uh, the Periscopes on my website. The thing about Periscopes are that they expire after 24 hours, but I save them to my camera roll. Um, I've had a couple disasters where the save didn't work because I think I Periscoped too long. But uh, the, uh, the, I upload them to YouTube and, I, and at learninginhand.com. I'm talking fast. Learninginhand.com. Uh, click on live broadcast from ISTE and scroll down and I have six archive there right now. And the nice thing about the archives are that you can fast forward through them and rewind, unlike the replays that you do in Periscope. Yeah, it probably depends on that recording length if I get to save them or not. But some of my half hour ones did get saved. All right, let's talk here. Hello, do you mind being recorded? Are, do you, where is your session? You're just out recruiting people to come to your session. I've been here. Right now here we have the chemistry project. And at 4 we have the biology project in table 15. And actually we have the blog in the school. So you can enter and see all the presentations that we have seen. And you, you, I think I got one of these earlier, but you're giving uh, these out. Best projects for your classroom? Okay. So you can enter and see all the projects. Let's see. Hold that there for a while because we got there's 77 people watching right now. 
and they like to either take a screenshot or that probably screenshots best guys because that's a lot to write down but all the projects are there and everything from the posters are all in that one spot and actually are also the photos and projects that we had present other other jills in other istes and you put all your isti stuff in one spot that's great so um i want to hear about your project but first i want to how how did you get chosen to come to isti well uh we come from mexico so we're like uh see the new technology so and here it's like to see how the people uh use the technology to use our projects and in also in our houses so we have in the chemistry project uh like a uh, house houses that the girls uh had uh like see the projects uh with different applications uh with to not use like so much light and so much water to be to have our planet Awesome. Yeah. Is there anything at the poster that you want to show me on on this one? Uh, well, uh, the at the left we have the all the projects, and at the right it's like uh, an introduction about the the chemistry project. I'll walk over there and take a look. Thanks for talking with me. I got one in my pocket. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, there really are a lot of wonderful students from Mexico. Doing a lot of great learning and sharing here. So here's her poster. I know streaming, it, you probably can't read anything on there. But hopefully you got her link, or maybe somebody will tweet that link. And you can view all that stuff online. There's like some 3D modeling going on. Um, and they have, some of their goals are to promote environmental awareness, design sustainable buildings, convey ecological education and use technology and it looks like they've really done that. <laughs> George, do you mind being on camera? I don't. All right. This is this is George Philip everybody. The George Philip. George. Yes, the George Philip. How's your ISTE going? My ISTE's going great. Uh, I've seen a lot of great student examples. That's usually what I'm here for. You know, I want to see what the students have created so then that way I can take that back to my classroom. Uh, so that I can show it to my kids, inspire my kids a little bit, and see if they can maybe even improve upon it, or you know, like what kind of other ideas they might gain from that. Ryan Reed called you the guy. Oh, thank you, Ryan Reed. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I'm here for too. Our, our student examples. That seems to be the the. You can never collect enough of those, and and their projects are always evolving. And we've just heard from uh, walked around it, and we've heard some amazing. That they're all students from Mexico. <laughs> they're they're doing great stuff. Yes, they are, and uh, yeah, I mean, you, it's it's impressive when you give students the power to create. You know, they will always impress you and go beyond any expectation that a teacher would have, and that's what I love to see, and that inspires me as a teacher to be like, you know what, I can step back, I can be the guide on the side instead of the stage, you know, up in front, and let them just kind of do what they want to do and show me that they know, understand what they're learning. So, um, what's so, so besides examples? What's not a big idea, but what's a little tiny tip or takeaway you've got at ISTE? Um, I went and saw George Kiros yesterday, and I think the biggest takeaway his was about you know the inventor's mindset, and so you know just that growth mindset, and we need to let our kids have a growth mindset. We as teachers need to have a growth mindset that we need to let them do more things and you know help guide them that way, and just kind of take it away fr from there, and not it's not. You know, there's no going to be no app or anything out there. There's going to be a silver bullet that's changed everything. What all that's Flip this around so you can see the hearts people are giving you. Oh, thank you. I love it. <laughs> I can't stand that it makes me do vertical video. But Oh, oh he's go. giving a heart back. That's there the first go. time that's happened. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So if you don't follow George on Twitter, let's... Uh, what do you mostly tweet about? Uh, usually about uh, inquiry-based learning and design thinking. Yeah, you do good stuff. Yeah. It was so good to see you. Thanks for talking with us. <laughs> That's the fun of poster sessions. And, of course, the VISTI is just running into people you know or don't know. <laughs> oh, we're, we're having dual uh, uh, periscopes. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Well, so people can hear you. So um, what I, I've learned a lot from, from doing this. And here, uh, the first thing I need to remember is, like, we look at name tags so we know who, who's going on. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. 
Top 50 bloggers. <laughs> yeah, you have a smart idea with the mic. I didn't think about that. I've been using this thing. Yeah, I, I. it's a long story I've told a few times, but this mic was very... I wasn't going to do it if I got this mic, and there was a shipping delay in Kentucky for Amazon. I paid for next day before I leave for ISTE, so I had to find it in town. It was more expensive. Now I have two. The people on Periscope want me to give it away, but I think I'm returning it to get my money. That's a pretty good idea to bring one, though. I, I wasn't thinking that far ahead, but that's smart. And they say they can't really hear the, the sound when I listen to the recordings, like you know how loud it is in here. And, and I think that the people watching can hear the, the people with the microphone better than I can. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty, as, I'm the same way, if, particularly if I'm holding it out like that. So what do you think of periscoping? What do you, is this your first time doing it here? At a, at a con like, yeah, I did it in, in my home a couple times to practice, and that was it. Totally. Um, I, like, I like the life that just the vertical video and only 24 hours kind of drives me nuts that it only lasts for 24 hours. They should totally open that up. Well, and maybe they will. Breaking the fourth wall between the audience and you, that's what the coolest part of this is. So I, I save everything to the camera roll, and I've been putting them on YouTube, but the problem is there's all these great comments and people putting, you know, saying stuff, and, and then I love the hearts too, that uh, they, those don't get saved in that camera roll recording. That's true. I, I, I imagine the service is going to blow up a little bit, and they might expand it. I've actually heard talk about them making a horizontal view. Like, is an oh, that would be a dream come true, because I, I have spent so much time teaching teachers and students to take horizontal videos and now I'm holding my phone like this. I'm, in, I'm incredibly embarrassed. What do you think of ISTE so far? Good. I, I took a couple years off, but this is probably my, maybe my 10th ISTE and uh, it's, it's always great and I, the poster sessions are always a highlight for me, so I've been spending a lot of time around here. Yeah, this is a really cool section. Our viewers have really liked this as well. So. But Tony, I gotta get going. I just wanted to say hi, do a dual periscope, see how that works. Yeah. All right. There, I think there are people flipping back and forth between them now. <laughs> well, thanks for. Seeing they don't get to see me very much because I don't. I don't flip the camera around. It's other interesting things. But but I do have my yellow shoes on today. That's that's. Uh, those got some hearts. Early. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, classy though. Like scuffed up on purpose. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a lot. A lot of walking. <laughs> Good to see you, John. A handshake, but that's so hard to do here. <laughs> Take care. All right, that was that was fun to see. Oh, thanks. <laughs> They're my most comfortable shoes and my brightest shoes. Oh no, this looks cool with a black background. Again, I love I love bulletin boards. I wish that when I taught, I had a more access to a digital camera and more. Uh, foresight to take pictures of all my bulletin boards because I think I did some pretty amazing ones, but um, they're all gone now. <laughs> Comfort is so important in it is see. I, I should check and see how many miles I've walked, but it's definitely been a lot. Okay, so this session uh, is interactive maker projects. Breadboards and coding are optional. And he has a lot of uh, those circuits there and some styrofoam. It looks like the planets. And, oh, it looks like a, an electronic quiz game. Let's look at the back of it. Oh, I loved making stu stuff like this as a kid. It wasn't that fancy, and it only had one light that connected to a battery. But those, qu those uh, electronic quiz boards I love doing, so it looks like it's a little more modern version of it. It's <laughs> so this is Roger Wagner if you're looking him up in the ISTE program. <laughs> hey. ah. The hyperduino is what he's talking. Do you want to take the microphone, then people can can hear, okay. if you don't mind. All right. So this is the uh, prototype, the first prototype from China, uh, for the actual production. They'll be delivered in two weeks. Uh, this is Roger Wagner speaking at ISTE 2015. I don't have a company, but I do know how to make something in China, and I know how to get promotional screwdrivers. All right. So that is the 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 hyperduino. And, and what does it do? Screwdriver. The Hyperduino, I'm so glad no, you asked. <laughs> that you know, okay. Yes, there are little things called screws and they need to be turned. No. Uh, if you were to do an Arduino project, 
Um, if you're to do an Arduino project right now in a maker space, like a library that's putting in a maker space, as soon as you do something in the Arduino, you have to put in resistors and a breadboard to be able to build your circuit. But you always put the same resistors. Well, that's kind of odd. So I thought to myself, how about if I made a piggyback board that had all the resistors on it? So now you can build an interactive project like the solar system one we see here where a student, hold on, we got a lot going on. So here's a project on the solar system that if we go to Jupiter um, or different planets, they'll tell us about those planets, right? And then the LEDs light up for whatever, so she's talking about a meteor, but it's interactive. If I touch the sun, then it goes to the sun. If I touch the moon, it goes to the moon. So the Hyperduino is a hyperlink between digital projects and physical projects that students make. Oh, lots of hearts. Well, thank you. Roger Wagner. You or what you're talking about. That's terrific. <laughs> well, thank you very much, and thanks for being here. And remember, hyperduino.com. Come on by. Uh, two weeks. Two weeks, they'll be delivered. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. I love this physical connection to the digital. That is awesome. <laughs> Tony Vincent. That's me. Live from Missy yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Roger. I did. It's in my back pocket here. I'll probably sit on it and poke myself later, but I got it. <laughs> well, that that is cool. If I can make something like that, that board that you can touch and then it launches something on your computer, that's pretty handy. So I was going to go to a session. Or some. My session's 15 minutes in, so I guess I'll just keep going around posters. <laughs> This one's called Full Steam Ahead, Project-Based Learning Using Steam. <laughs> I'm sorry, are you talking to it, oh, it, it, It's live? Do oh. you want to say hi? Yeah, who am I saying? Yeah, uh, just to people who probably aren't at ISTE but um, are participating through my pointing my camera at stuff. Hi, everyone. We're so sorry you can't be here. It is so exciting and learning so much. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay. Oh, and there's your Twitter. Yes. I think I've seen you on Twitter. Tweet me. Good for you for sharing. Yeah, it, the people have really appreciated that they can. They feel like they're at ISTE and they have to go through the crowds just like me. <laughs> and they meet awesome people like you. So, so um, yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Awesome. So, uh, whenever I talk to people, then what? What's your big takeaway from ISTE 2015? What I'm taking away is I love seeing projects. What exactly are all of these fabulous technology people doing, and how can I bring this information back to my staff? That's my main goal, because I'm here to be a sponge for the sake of my staff who can't be here. Yeah. Well, they're lucky to have you, and, and uh, thanks for saying hi. <laughs> my pleasure. This one's called We Have a Story to Tell. And there's a big poster up there that says, It's November, and the theme is Native Americans. Now what? <laughs> Doesn't look like there's any students at this one. Um, but they've made a website... Let's go over here. Online resources. If you guys want to screenshot this tiny, tiny URL.com slash teach hyphen about hyphen indigenous. All right, good. Okay, we'll look a little bit at their board. Okay, let's 
I'm going to go back to Russian Hurley. He should be set up by now. <laughs> there he is. He does so much with uh, videos and what students can make and teaching them some really great movie-making things. So let's see if we can say hi to him. This session is Fostering Excellence via Digital Video Contests. And his, his website, if you're not familiar with it, is nextvista.org. Hey, Russian, do you mind being recorded? All right, you want to hold a microphone while you talk, too, so people can hear you? <laughs> Do you know how to hold one of these? <laughs> Here, whenever I talk to you, I want to get your name tag first, so people... We have 63 people watching right now. Yeah. What's that? Hello, 63 people. Cool. So, so, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm doing a poster session about digital video projects and digital video contests because I do lots of, uh, lots of talking from, you know, like the front of a room to an audience. And I figured with getting people comfortable about contests, the thing I needed to do was just talk with them and really just kind of sort of like a poster session. I'm trying that out. And so we're talking about like the three academic contests we do a year, 90 seconds or less, creatively explain something one might encounter in school. Um, and the service contest we do once a year where kids get to know charities in their communities and they learn to tell their story, interview people there, and create a video. And, and the, high, you know, the finalists of that contest, they earn $200 donations to the highlighted charity. Uh, and of course, they you know it, they get international glory and you know good stuff. And you have so many of them on nextvista.org, right? Yeah. They, they, we got about sixteen hundred videos on the site right now. Yeah. So we, we're talking to some other people. We really get out of Vista are, are finding student examples for things that we want students to do. And so nextvista.org is the place to find a lot of great ones. You are a good man, and 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 I and I love that message for sure. And it's all free, right? It's just a little save the world thing. So join in. Woo. Hearts are a good thing in the Periscope world. So, right oh, look at those! That's so, that's so cool. Yeah, I don't oh. know how it decides what color they are. They're colorful for those of you that you guys are awesome. I like like at any point today where I'm down about anything. Oh, I'll be like, oh, but the hearts, the, the hearts. hearts, the hearts. Yeah, remember the hearts. <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> Keep making cool things happen. Yeah, you too. <laughs> okay. Oh, this one over here is called Solar Stove. Now, but sometimes, yeah. Oh, now there's some pink ones. So they're coming from a different person. Gotcha. That's what the colors are. Hi, do you mind being recorded? <laughs> Do you mind holding a microphone? <laughs> we have uh, about 50 people watching live right now. Okay. Um, people who can't be at ISTE, but they'd love to hear about your project here. Okay. So um, tell us who you are and, and what you have here. Okay, we are a school from, from Mexico, Guadalajara. I don't know if you, you have mm -hmm. been there. We made a, a solar stove. In Mexico, we have a lot of sun, like, almost all the time. So we we think about a way to, to help poor people Um take benefits of that sun. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a prototype here. 3D printed? Yeah. The real one, it's like 1.2 meters, like 4 or 5 feet. Oh, wow. And it really works. It It's pretty cool because it's... Can I touch it? Uh, or is it a little, a little well, bit. Okay, <laughs> I won't touch it then. <laughs> okay. Um, it's really cool because we use the, the para parabolic equation. Mm. We make this... Uh, like in a month more or less and it worked like perfectly as you can see we we took it to a to a poor village in our country and people accepted very cool and well they thanks a lot and did, did you do this as part of a class or was it yeah a, an like after school thing we or? were in a, a robotic class with, with our teacher here like like the idea to do it and we made it that's all awesome so there's a lot of math in this yeah <laughs> what, was, what was what was the number one thing you learned from, from this 
and where I think that you can take like benefits of the the things we have in our in our nature, things like that. In mathematics, that it have to be like very exact to work, because if something is wrong, it we made one and the first one it was a little of mess because uh -huh. we didn't get the right like the right answer in our our and well mess. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> thank you. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Again, so many great projects here. Okay, I think I'm. I think I've added one that says "From Scannable to Wearables: A Classroom for Generation AZ." <gasps> oh, and it's Monica Burns. Hi, Monica. Do you mind being recorded? Do you mind taking a microphone? All right, tell me, okay, let's get your name tag first. So people know. Sure. And tell us about what you have here. So this is our poster um, from Scannable to Wearable, a classroom for Generation Z. Courtney Pepe and I presented at South by Southwest on a panel talking about all this good stuff. So we wanted to do something a little more hands-on and show some people the augmented reality in action, uh, talk a little bit about how we're exploring wearables in different environments. And so that's what we're here doing today. Yeah, passing out some AR triggers that work with LipR, the augmented reality app, and showing off some videos and some different things, whether it's Google Cardboard or Apple Watch. So it's been a good day so far. All right, can, look, can we play with these cards? Can you, sh can you show me what these do? Oh, and what app did you launch? You can layer all sorts of buttons on top. So even though the video is playing, I can tap on any button, and it takes me out to content that's loaded somewhere else. So in this case, it's connecting me out to Twitter, to a Twitter button um, for more information. So and what, is, what app did you use to trigger? This is with um, the app Blipar. So the augmented reality triggers that we're working with today are connected to Blipar. My, my kids have a book that we got called Action Hero, Action Movie Kid. And it has that on the cover. So now they think every time we read it that we have to get an iPad and do the, 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 the cover thing. And like, no, it's a story. We could just read it. Flipar <laughs> also has um, covers with Brain Space, the magazine Brain Space. They have this really cool, um, I think it's uh, some type of, I'm really bad with my dinosaurs, even though I just saw Jurassic World. But there's a dinosaur of some type on the front cover that comes to life when you scan it. So it's pretty neat. And it's, uh, it's really worth checking trigger again? Somebody's going to try to scan it from... Online. We'll see Online? if that works. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so through Blipper, I'll put it. Yeah, and it's free right there. app. I'll try and move my fingers out of the I know. Yeah. There's a glare, and then. It and so it's available for iOS and Android devices. So it's great if you have a, you know, mismatch of different devices, or you want it to be parent friendly. So whatever kind of lifestyle choice they've made of Android and iOS, they can scan it on multiple devices, and it's completely free. Ah. Uh, so how do you create? So this is a tool where you have a web platform and you'll create by uploading a trigger. So some of the triggers that I've made here in the background are with Canva, uh, canva.com. It's a really easy poster making tool. And so I'll upload my Canva poster creation and add any of the media that I want on top of it. Can you do that through Blipper's website? Yeah, and they're real educator friendly. So you can just shoot them an email and they'll open up their whole platform for educators, even though they're working with big brands to do other things. So it's great. It's really great. And it's, um, it's one of those things where you can make the most of it you know, as much as you want to. You can do something simple with just one video popping up, or you can add all sorts of buttons and animation. So it's great for teachers when any part of that learning curve. Yeah. Let's, we, we do some hearts here so we can, we can see. Hi. Um, why choose this instead of Erasma or Daiquiri? Yeah, so Daiquiri's great. They make tons of really wonderful pre-made AR um, pieces as well, ones that we've been showing off here with uh, Human Anatomy, the 3D Elements, so definitely recommend checking them out. Um, but this is great because you can put some 
codes if you want to to keep your blips uh, private or you can really have them open to everyone so you don't have to subscribe to a channel which I think is what most people find as being a difference between Erasma wow, so people love that yeah mm -hmm. great great <laughs> I love this I love everything that's happening here yeah, yeah. so except for the vertical video yeah. I want it to be horizontal I know then I'm we could then we could both right? be look like that would be it's so it's much yeah, better which but way is it TV shaped, right? yeah so I should hold my phone yeah there. but Hmm. All right. Well, well Monica, thanks. It's good to see you. And thanks for sharing. Blipper, I'm checking it out. Movie kid book. <laughs> thanks. All right. Well, we've seen some really good poster sessions here. A lot of examples of what teachers and students can make. And I think the biggest thing I've seen teachers and students make here is a difference. There's sustainability uh, projects. There's projects to teach culture and projects to make connections with your students. Uh, it's really neat to see. Uh, I think there are more posters this afternoon, so hopefully I uh, make it to those. So we'll see you later.